My name is Ari, I'm an education scientist and I've been working on the topic of dyslexia since 2015. And since 2020, I've been posting videos on the topic of dyslexia. What I haven't done until now is uh, shared my personal experience with dyslexia. So that's what I would like to do today. I grew up on a farm in Holland and that was absolutely lovely. However, this other part of my life, school, didn't really go so well. I actually struggled quite a bit. I think this image represents quite well how I was feeling during that time. Learning multiplication tables was an absolute nightmare for me and of course learning to read wasn't really working out as well. Now teachers were getting worried and my parents were asked to come to school and this is what my dad remembers from that encounter. And well the most uh, funny thing was that the teachers uh, qualified you as not very intelligent because you asked so much. Now this is absolutely crazy uh, statement from them because that was one of, one of the coping ways you had to 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 gather uh, information. That was perhaps the only way. The books at home and the books at school weren't accessible to me. But I was learning, just not the way they expected me to. Overall, it's fair to say that I got people worried and my mom decided that she should have me tested for dyslexia. And of course, the result was that I'm dyslexic. But at that point, there was another result that they had to deal with. And this part of my story, I think is best if it's told by my mother. Aber sie hat auch gleichzeitig einen Intelligenztest gemacht. Und da kam raus, dass du gering intelligent bist, sagen wir es mal nett. Ich habe mich furchtbar erschrocken und habe das aber nicht geglaubt. Und habe stattdessen den Test, also das, das, das Dyslexie-Teil nicht, weil den brauchten wir für verschiedene Sachen, aber den Intelligenztest habe ich versteckt und später irgendwann weggeworfen, weil ich gesagt habe, das... Das ist so demotivierend, das darf der auf gar keinen Fall wissen. Also der bist du. <lacht> so, yeah. I was really lucky that my parents really believed in my intellectual abilities, but at school they didn't. I remember one instance where a teacher tried to catch me up on something math related because I missed something uh, due to my pullouts. And she said, well, I just told you the basics, that's good enough for you. Or in other words, I'm not going to teach you all of it because you're probably not getting it anyway. My school gave us this school report when I was around 11 or 12. And there they wrote, Steeds mehr kun je zelfstandig lezen. So more and more you're able to read independently. So they knew that I wasn't really able to read. But Still, they decided to leave me to my own devices and uh, let me take a very important test that determines to which school I was able to go to next. My actual score on this test, we will never really know because the main thing it picked up on was my inability to read. So that meant that I was only able to go to a trade school in Holland, even though I wanted to go to university. So we felt like the only option would be to move to Germany and pretend as if I've never taken that test in the first place. I asked my mom how the decision to move to a different country actually came about, and this is what she told me. <laughs> um, yeah, weißt du? Uh, das war für mich war das der einzig mögliche Weg. Es, es, ich habe keine andere Möglichkeit gesehen. Bis in den Niederlanden wäre deine Schulkarriere zu Ende gewesen. Mit sowas wie, ja, was dann in Deutschland Volksschulabschluss heißt oder so. Das wäre einfach zu Ende gewesen. Du hattest keine Chance. Ich habe mich erkundigt bei allen möglichen, auch alternativen Schulen, die es gibt, von äh, Montessori und Dalton und weiß ich, was da nicht alles äh, sein kann. Niemand hätte dich genommen mit so einem Zitotutz, wie du den da gemacht hast. Das, du hattest einfach keine Chance. So we moved to Germany and I had to get used to the German school system. Suddenly I had to write in German and read in German instead of Dutch. 
And um, during that time, I developed an inflammation of my stomach due to stress. During that time, I did a lot of extra work to keep up and catch up with my peers. And there are a couple of thoughts that actually really helped me to keep going. One of them being, I'm going to prove them wrong. I'm going to make it to university. You know, they didn't believe in me, but I'm going to make it anyway, even if I get there without being able to read and write properly. And another thought was one that my parents told me, namely that their time at university was the best time of their life. So naturally, I also really wanted to go there. And slowly, I started to convince some teachers around me. One of them, my German teacher, told my parents that if she reads what I write phonetically, then it's actually quite nice. And that was one of my first successes while being in Germany. The entire time, sports kept me balanced, ideally while being in the mountains. It helped me seeing myself not only as a student, but also as someone who is talented in different areas. And then eventually I got to university and I started to get straight A's for the first time in my life, really. And as good as that sounds, I wasn't able to let it in anymore. For all these years, I was dependent on not being influenced by what other people were thinking about me. So I had kind of this armor around me. So when I then got the positive feedback that I wanted for so long, it didn't really, I wasn't really able to let that positivity come in. And now still when I'm thinking about that, that is something that makes me kind of sad. Uh, that that is how that went. Together with my dad, who is a family therapist, I started working on accepting a more positive image of myself. And I would say that the first time I really succeeded of doing so was when I took over a big lecture of my professor during my MA. I taught in front of around 50 students about the topic of dyslexia. A few weeks ago, I taught yet again a four-hour workshop at the University of Heidelberg and here at YouTube, I've reached over four million people. And at this point, it's almost silly. It would be silly of me to not recognize all that positive feedback. And um, I'm just really grateful that it turned out this way. And that's, I did not imagine that at certain points. Yeah. So I would like you to know that you're not alone with this and that you can get through it. And if you ever need to talk, then feel free to reach out.